Okay, it's 3.30. I would like to call to order the Physical Services Committee meeting for February 21st, 2023. If you'd all please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And before we get going, I would just like to remind everyone that a copy of the agenda for the meeting can be found on the county website under the tab for the legislature. Uh, please silence your phones and electronic devices. And uh, I would just like to remind everyone that uh, the microphones in this statutory committee meeting room are very robust and pick up side conversations. So I just ask that you keep those to a, a minimum. At this time, I would ask to call the roll, please. Ben? Here. Raja? Here. 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 Why not? Thank you. First on our agenda, uh, County Executive's Office. Are they here? Oh, good. Okay. Uh, request confirmation of reappointments to the Orange County Water Authority Board of Directors, P2E, D. Cordisco, L. Gracia, and W. Bradenburg. Legislative request number 59. Could I get a motion and a second? Please? I'll move it. Second. Second. To do. And Ben. Yes. Take it. Thank you. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Michael Terrell. I'm a special assistant to the county executive. Uh, newly hired, so uh, thank you. Welcome. And uh, uh, Chairman Cheney, uh, we'd like to re um, have the appointments reconfirmed on uh, the four that you already mentioned. Um, they've been outstanding on the uh, Water Authority, and uh, um, I'd like to have that solved. Okay, any questions or comments? Yes, Legislator Ben. Is that moved from Walpole? Yes, it is. It is. Oh. Yep. Any other? All right, hearing none, uh, I'll call the question. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Carrie, thank you very much. Thank you. Sir. Welcome. Thank you. Got off easy for your first time. <laughs> I'll be back. All right. Next, uh, Alan Sorensen, Commissioner of Planning. First item, request to assume lead agency status under the State Environmental Review Act seeker with respect to the purchase of an unused 10-mile, 101-acre section of the former Erie Railroad right-of-way, which starts in the town of Cornwall at the Moodna Trestle, then heads south through the town of Blooming Grove, village of Washingtonville, and ends at Camp LaGuardia in the town slash village of Chester classifying the action as a type one action under seeker and determining that the action will not have any significant adverse environmental impacts. Legislative request number 54. Thank you. Motion to so Legislative two week and uh, legislative talk. Go ahead, Commissioner. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, this is uh, a required step that we have to take with respect to the environmental review pursuant to seeker um this seeker uh action is specific to the property acquisition only uh and uh therefore we um, have uh written it in such a way that uh we're recommending a negative declaration no adverse environmental impact um subsequent development of the rail trail will be um subject to its own environmental review and will comply with all the requirements uh, there to moving forward. Questions or comments? Right. Seeing none, I'll call the question. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Carried. Next item, request to accept and appropriate grant funds in the amount of $22,616,598 these funds are appropriated to Orange County via the federal 5307 program. The FTA grant amount is $22,616,598. The New York State matches $2,827,075. The 
and the county share is $2,827,075. This project consists of the creation of the Scunamunk Rail Trail, which once acquired by Orange County and permanently protected, would facilitate the creation of bicycle and pedestrian connections to the Salisbury Mills train station, Chester Park and Ride, and dial-a-bus services in the village slash town of Chester. The proposed Scunamunk Rail Trail would dramatically improve pro public transit use and services by providing pedestrian and bicyclist connections to existing transit facilities while also opening opportunities to expand service within this area of Orange County. The grant application for the use of 5307 funds will include our right-of-way incidentals, engineering and design, construction and construction review, $2,827,075 bonding, legislative request number 66. Could I get a motion? Yes, Legislator Tui, Legislator Tuttel. Go ahead, Commissioner. Okay. Mr. Chairman, this is just another uh, step in the process of developing the, the Scunamunk Rail Trail. Um, I was before this committee last month um, making the request for the uh, to increase the, the county share uh, for the current uh, project uh, price, and the bond resolution is just necessary uh, so that we can proceed. Uh, with the FTA 5207 application. The funding is committed uh, from the FTA. We've been going through the process of doing the NEPA review, which is the, the federal environmental review. Uh, um, we've, we've just taken, uh, addressed the CEQA review for the property acquisition. So it's just um, another step in the process of uh, moving forward with uh, the design and um, ultimately construction of the Scum Rail Trail. Questions, comments? <laughs> All right. Uh, yes. Yeah. You see that amount of money being enough for the whole deal? Uh, we do. Um, it's one of the reasons we increased the amount was to uh, ensure that we had sufficient funding uh, to move forward. Other questions or comments? Okay. <laughs> I'm sure. Okay. Um, Seeing none, I'll call the question. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Carried. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Okay, let's move on to parks. And our first item is request supplemental appropriation to the capital projects budget for the parks, various capital improvements. Upon approval, a new capital project will be created, $350,000. Legislative request number 30, can I get a motion in a second, please? I'll move it. Second. The Duke and Ben, thank you. Go ahead. So this is for various capital improvements that we'll be doing at the parks. There is a backup sheet that lists the items that we would like to do. Questions or comments? Yes, Legislator Pontel. Thank you, Sean. Um, why was this not proposed during the budget in the budget process for capital? Because this is creating a new capital project. We had it originally asked for it in the operating budget, additional funds in operating, and budget switched it to capital. Okay. So if it was budgeted for, but under your Correct. operating budget, and we're going to. Yes, and there's a transfer if you. Uh, if you have Schedule A, you'll see you can enter fund transfer. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Other comments or questions? Yeah, I'm seeing some uh, tree removal. Of, it was uh, be remiss if I didn't say uh, about animals. You was pointing out numerous uh, trees that need to come down at uh, Hills. Mm -hmm. Not not Morning Hills, the town of Newburgh. Uh, I'll, I'll go. I'll go. Right. Yeah. It's the ash trees. Yeah. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? All right. Seeing none, I'll call the question. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Carried. Next, we have a request to declare the intent to assume lead agency status under the State Environmental Review Act 
with respect to the construction of pickleball courts at Thomas Bull Memorial Park in the town of Montgomery, New York, and preliminary class preliminarily class classifying the action as unlisted legislative request number 60. Can I get a motion and a second? So, slide two, second. Go ahead. And this is just to start the process with to perform the seeker on the area for the technical works. Six works, right? Six. Six, I believe you're right. We Four. were Four. six. Yeah. Other questions? Legislative thought Um, On page two of three of the questionnaire for the review act. Question 8A, will the proposed action result in a substantial increase in traffic above present levels? And the answer to that question appears to be no. However, we have, it's presently a vacant field and we're gonna be adding pickleball courts, which we're hoping will attract multiple people. So I kind of feel that question should be a yes. It's not a vacant field, it's next to the tennis court. So it's well, yeah, but it was I remember being like off to the side. I don't think we're gonna get a, a huge increase in traffic at one given time. It's more gonna be staggered throughout the day. Thanks for okay. okay. Other questions or comments? All right. Seeing none, I'll call the question. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Do you happen to have with you an update on I where do. the museums I are? Do. I know it's not on the agenda, but it seems to always be a, an in, point of interest that we like to keep them. So the firm that we hired came down the week of January 23rd and started their site assessments. They got most of the information they needed, but they couldn't do the roofs because we were hit with a snowstorm. So that's planned to be done the next time they come down, which is March 20th is the date that they're planning on coming. I spoke to the architectural historian. He's working on drafting the current conditions for each site. And at the same time, he's gathering historical information and images from both the county historian and the New York State Cultural Resource Information System. He's reviewing all of the information and he's going to establish the chrono chronological evolution and historical significance of the buildings and compare them to his site assessment and then evaluate the gaps between them. So when he comes down again, he'll be able to compare what it's saying historically to what he's assessing at this point. And then he'll be able to provide us with recommendations. The engineers have done the mechanical and electrical systems evaluation and they're currently working on the current conditions report and then they'll move forward with their recommendations. But this is going to be about now probably another four months until they're done. Any questions or comments? Okay. Very good. Thank you very much. You. Appreciate it. <clears throat> Next, we'll move to DPW. Um, Commissioner Benega and Deputy Commissioner Ewald. And the first item is a request for supplemental appropriation to the maintenance of roads and bridges operating budget in the amount of $75,000 for the New York State DOT Unified Planning Work Program for 2022-2023. Program is 95% federal and 5% local match. Funds will be used to purchase traffic counters for the traffic volume UPWP task Local match of 5% will be from the 2023 operating budget. Legislative request number 40. Can I get a motion? So, so Legislative Brescia, Legislator Benton. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. So this would be to set up the capital for, to purchase um, radar traffic counters. Currently, uh, for our traffic counting program, we put out the tubes you see across the road. Um, one of the issues with that is our staff has to work in live traffic. We have to have flaggers out there. Um, they have to, you know, work in the travel lanes while they're putting this equipment down. And <clears throat> the tubes are prone to getting damaged as well. Um, the work effort that takes place for the traffic counter program, we get the DPW gets reimbursed through 
the Orange County Transportation Council for the equipment and for the time spent doing that work. Um, basically, they the Transportation Council's um, reimbursed by the state for that time. So this would allow us to purchase the equipment that we can put out so that we can have our staff set it up outside the travel lane. There won't be anything in the roadway where the vehicles are traveling. It'll also allow us to put the counters out um, in conditions where we normally can't, which is anytime there might be snow plowing or something else that would tear them up. Um, and there'll be a 95% reimbursement from Orange County Transportation Council for their UPWP and the 5% local match will come out of our operating. Questions or comments? These traffic counters, they do anything else? Do they check speed too? So you know, they do that? Um, we record the speed and then, you know, the speed and looking at the, the average speeds for the duration around. Um, there's other information we're able to acquire from it as well. But mainly we get the number of, of counts. But this doesn't have a display that tells the driver how fast they're going. No, it's, it's, it's not very discreet. To do that. The, the other benefit of this is that they would be uh, less noticeable. So when, when you're traveling along, you come up to the tubes across the road. <clears throat> you know, motors have some sort of reaction, whether they slow down or not. These are off to the side. You may not even see them. So these are just on a pole off the side of the of the road, kind of like a kind of like a game counter, only it counts cars and does correct. Stuff. And and the idea is that we will they're um, temporarily mounted at that location. So typically we put our counters out for a week and then move to another spot. And uh, the program that we have is uh, every other year we take traffic counts at locations designated by New York State DOT. The other year we take counts along our county owned bridges. Of uh, solar batteries or the battery rechargeable batteries. Battery rechargeable batteries. Okay. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Okay, seeing none, I'll call the question. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Carried. <clears throat> Next, we have a request approval of a roadway dedication along the northwesterly line of County Road 31 Maple Avenue through the lands of the estates at Rolling Ridge LLC tax map parcel 12-1-70.211 in the town of Goshen. During the review process of this project, it was deemed necessary for drainage purposes to widen the county right of way along this portion of County Road 31 legislative request number 41. Could I get a motion? So second, moved. Please? Later to hotel on the second. Second. Thank you. Two. Go ahead. This would be to accept a strip of land. Uh, it's approximately 55 feet wide by 245 feet ish long, uh, roughly three tenths of an acre um, of land that was offered for dedication as part of the uh, planning board referral process. And this allows us to acquire the appropriate right away along our county roads for maintenance and improvements. Um, in certain instances, there's parcels of land where they own to the center line of the road, and then we just have the prescriptive easement essentially. So this would be to um, accept that offer. Questions or comments? Legislator Ben. So the lands on either side of this are okay. We already own it, or we. Uh... The, the drainage is fine. From the map I'm seeing right here, the on one side, it looks like we own about the same amount as we're acquiring. The other side, probably not, but as properties are before us for plan board referrals, we basically <clears throat> try to do them as they come before us. Okay. <clears throat> Other questions or comments? Uh, are you leaving? You said in the length of 246? Um, Two forty-five, and then there's a, a forty-eight foot section right here. Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. okay. Other questions or comments? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Carried. Next, we have a request approval of a roadway dedication along the southeasterly line of County Road 31 Maple Avenue to the lands of Chesterdale Properties LLC, tax map parcel 17-1-4.1 in the town of Goshen. 
During the review process for this project, it was deemed necessary to widen and better define the county right of way along this portion of County Road 31. Our county road maps dated 1939 only show an old fence line assumed to be the right of way. Legislative request number 42. Can I get a motion in a second, please? So moved. Thank you. All right. So you're right there. Yeah. No, no, no Ben. Ben, sorry. Okay, go ahead. This would be for similar purposes on the same road, Canada 31. Uh, the project is in between uh, Canada 100 and Canada 42 on the southeasterly side of the road. Um, this strip to be that was offered is again, it's roughly 20 feet, 20 foot wide strip by about 830 feet long for a total of approximately half an acre. Any questions or comments? I just have one question. From the center line of the road, the county and the town into the park. Are they all different? I think it varies. And in some instances, many of the properties might own to the center line of the road. And then we have rights just based on the operation of the road and the maintenance that we do. So this just to kind of clean it up. So in this instance, this property line in some places actually extended out into the, the paved surface of the county road slightly in areas. So people that own stuff that's not they can't dedicate it to it. I mean they could, right? But, but you don't have any visits. You know, you get one property and the next property is different. Could be, right? It could be, yeah. And basically right now as an applicant that is before one of the municipal municipalities um has referred to us, we we're trying to acquire what we um have in free. Other questions or comments? Okay, seeing none, I'll call the question. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Carried. Next, we have a request supplemental appropriation to the capital projects budget in the amount of $1 million for the Never Sink Drive culvert replacement. This project has been approved under the 2023 capital plan as project number 53 for, the, for $1 million state funding 100% New York State DOT Bridge New York Culvert Program. Upon approval, a new capital project will be created. It's legislative request number 43. And I'd like a motion so second, please. Second. Okay. Legislative Russia okay. and Legislative Bank. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, this is to establish a capital project and accept the funding from the state for um, Bridge or Culvert New York grant. As it says, it's 100%. Grant from New York State DOT for a million dollars. It's on County Route 80 in the town of Deer Park for the culvert replacement. Um, it's an existing corrugated steel plate arch culvert that's roughly six foot by 12 foot. Questions or comments? Marty, you too. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The uh, million bucks had enough to do it. Thanks for the on that big culvert. We believe so. Uh, the, there's a lot of red tape and, and additional costs that are associated with these type of grants. Um, but right now, the cost estimates put it very close to under a million dollars. I'll just say that Ryan and Travis have done an excellent job of getting these funds. They put the applications in themselves from our office. A lot of DPWs don't do themselves. Um, and they've gotten very good at it. And they've also both been involved with doing the review process of other applications from other municipalities as well. So, <clears throat> so it's been a very good effort. I think they're doing a great job with these with these grants and these programs. Yes, anytime we can get the state to pay for something and we don't have to, we're, we're very pleased. So, thanks. And as they get involved with these reviews, you know, they're on these committees reviewing these applications, they get more and more familiar with how they get scored, how there are applications in the future as well. Legislator Ben. Again, we front the money, but get reimbursed sometime in the future. I believe so. It's nice to get it, but let's yeah, yeah make sure we do. That. Okay. Um, any further questions or comments? All right. I will call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Pass. Next, we have a request supplemental appropriation of the capital projects budget in the amount of $1 million for the Lakes Road culvert replacement. 
This project has been approved under the 2023 capital plan as project number 46 for $1 million state funding, 100% New York State DOT Bridge New York Culvert Program. Upon approval, a new capital project will be created. Legislative request number 44. Can I get a motion? Legislator Tui and Minority Leader Duke. Go ahead. Uh, this is also for a Bridge New York Culvert uh, grant, which we received to establish that capital project. Um, except the, the funds. Uh, again, it's a 100% grant for a million dollars. Um, it's on the culvert is located on County Route 5. Um, and it is approximately a four foot by five foot steel beam supported concrete slab that varies, I think, on either end slightly on the size. Um, but this would be to replace and, and upsize this culvert. Uh, the location is near Lake Avenue or uh, Cromwell Road. Is that the Brown Lake? I um, um, apologize. Uh, this is a uh, Walton Lake. Walton Lake, yes. Legislator Ben, as a quick point, could you send us actually like a small little map for each of these? Just send it to Jean so she can just send it to everybody. Absolutely. Just so we can see where it is on the map. Because I think I know where it is. Like, yeah. Send where it is. Other questions or comments? All right. Seeing none, I'll call the question. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Carry. Next, we have a request to authorize all necessary temporary permanent easement acquisitions of parcels of real property. <clears throat> As such, easements are identified and deemed necessary by the Orange County Department of Public Works and as situated in the town of Cornwall, County of Orange, State of New York, in connection with a bridge replacement project known as the Main Street Number no. 2 Bridge Replacement Project. The purchase prices to be paid by the County of Orange for each temporary slash permanent easement shall be in an amount corresponding to the appraised value of each proposed temporary slash permanent easement. The Orange County Department of Public Works shall order an appraisal for each temporary slash permanent easement deemed necessary for this Main Street number two bridge replacement legislative request number 49. Can I get a motion? So no. And the second. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. This will authorize the acquisition of permanent and temporary easements necessary for the construction of Main Street Number Two Bridge, which is um, if you're entering Cornwall, uh, you go through the traffic circle, and just before you get into the uh, more downtown <clears throat> setting, with uh, that bridge right there, uh, we've already been before the legislature for that capital project. We're hoping to bid that out very shortly. Um, but this would be to accept four permanent easements and five temporary easements for that construction. Um, the approximate total cost for the four permanent easements is just under $10,000. And the uh, total cost for the five temporary easements is just under $15,000. Legislator Tuttle. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this is the one that's adjacent to the Canterbury Inn? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so when you go through, because there's several bridges on that circle, um, when you go across that, when their construction is going to be underway, will we have a workaround for people to get to Main Street? It will be maintained be, main open all the time. It will be maintained. It's going to be a phased approach construction um, okay. so that we can maintain access to all the businesses. Yeah, because it's a pretty narrow to begin with with yep. the residences and the business they'll do right. they'll do one half of the bridge and then we'll open the roads yeah so it'll be like a temporary path, like going in and out is it it'll, only a two-lane bridge it'll, it'll continue to be two lane it, it's pretty wide in that area actually i tried to so do this supposed to be two lanes maintained and they're going to push the two lanes over okay. but it's actually it's quite wide in that area <clears throat> it'll be a tight two lanes during construction um which and the, the stage construction will lengthen the time construction and when we are physically setting the precast uh, structures for the side that we're working on there we anticipate a one-day closure of the bridge for each side of the bridge so basically we're anticipating two separate days of a 
of closure at that point in time we have a detour route where a couple of the roads will be converted to one lane um, and we will do a short detour around the bridge and then when um the bridge is in place that is also going to have accommodations like it currently does for pedestrians improved Accommodation. Much improved from where it's at now. There'll be a crosswalk added there. There'll be a country island. Will there be a bike lane added to it since <clears> it's such <throat> a wide bridge? There's no bike lane there, and right now there's parallel parking on both sides of that road. Right. It's already very narrow. If you get into Main Street, yeah, there. I just heard that they were considering <clears throat> adding a bike bike way there. That we don't have. Yeah, I don't think there's any consideration of that on these plans. It was just improved pedestrian <laughs> access, and likely are we going to probably lose a couple of parking spots there during construction. During construction, there'll be a couple of parking spaces that are uh, temporary eliminated. I believe that we're getting them all back one after construction is sure. completed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, uh, just, Mary. Just a question. On the easement, you said there were how many temps and how many permanent? There, there are four permanent and five temporary. Are any of the temporaries going to be permanent? In other words, they're going to get the 15 and the 10? No, the, the temporaries are areas that extend out beyond where the permanent even easements will be so they're, they're needed for uh, a, a construction lay down area access to get down below for some of the demolition um, things of that nature so and they may be the same property owner. But they are all the same property owners. Oh, yeah. yeah yeah um the the reason there's four four property owners and <clears throat> the one property owner has two separate temporary easements <laughs> Other questions or comments? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Carried. <laughs> Mr. Denega, next one is yours. Request to confirm appointment of Beaver Dam Lake District <laughs> Advisory Board members in accordance with December 13, 2022 Beaver Dam Lake District election results. Jay Yunus. Legislative request number 62. Can I get a motion and a second? So moved. Legislator Tottell and the second. Second. Legislator Ben. <clears throat> Go ahead, Commissioner. All right. This is, as you know, they do a, a, a separate elections every December for a few of next district. And then it's just required in their bylaws for the legislature to confirm those appointments and the results of the election. Um, and this was this one spot open. This is uh, Jason, Jason, Jason. Uh, Jones. Uh, he represents the New Windsor section, New Windsor district. Of there, this is a pretty good misspelling. Questions or comments? <clears throat> Seeing none, I'll call the question. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> Carried. Okay. Moving on to environmental facilities related uh, motion. Request to confirm all rates, including increasing certain rates charged at Orange County owned solid waste disposal facilities for single stream recycling and municipal solid waste, effective 4 1 2023. Increased tipping fees due to increased hauling and processing fees as follows. Municipal solid waste MSW increase from current rate of $121.25 to $129, and that's uh, per ton. Uh, single stream recycling SSR increase from current rate of $110 to $117.50 per ton. And third, to implement a $100 per load fee to be assessed to a vendor who brings a SSR load that is contaminated with 10% or more MSW. It's legislative request number 61. And could I get a motion and a second, please? Oh, <clears throat> legislative uh, minority leader to do and a second. I'll second it. <clears throat> oh, you, you have a question? You no, I just want to make a statement before we get into discussing that I'll have to abstain on all of these. Okay, please. Yep. So go ahead and uh, explain. You're probably here for all three of them. So. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the correct ones are by the ton. These prices listed are per ton. Um, so we we had to we rebid uh, both contracts one for, one for MSW, one for single stream recycling. Uh, I'm sorry, we rebid the single stream recycling. We the MSW we increased 
the contract to the holder by 5%, which was allowed within the existing contract. So we didn't have to rebid that one. Both of them had asked for, for increased escalation clause, uh, costs, obviously with the environment going on right now. Uh, and it turns out the recycling um, market is even more variable right now than it had been uh, the last couple of years. So uh, we did have somewhat of unexpected increases. The vendor originally came back to us asking for a hike that was right around the range of where the bids came in for the single stream recycling. <clears throat> the prices went from $70 a ton to $125 a ton that we pay the hauler to take it away. That's not the tipping fee, that's what we have to pay. We have other overhead on top of that cost, which then translates into our tipping fees. Uh, <clears throat> so hence the increase of the tipping fees that you see here, um, the MSW, we were increasing by, uh, it was from uh, 121, 25 to 129 is what we proposed. And that's based on the increases of 5% increase that the, uh, the contractor. IWS um, requested from us and provided backup, and we believe it was a legitimate request um, based on what, what's going on in the economy uh, and fuel costs and whatnot. Um, with the recycling, it is more of an industry issue, a market issue. It's, and the memory can probably explain better, but um, we did look at some compar comparable uh, rates around other counties, some of the surrounding municipalities. We're always conscientious of not outpricing ourselves from that market. So to speak, you know, if we don't want somebody to say this is too expensive in Orange County, we're going to drive all the way to Sullivan or Ulster, wherever they're going to go. Um, so that's all taken into consideration. Uh, the the fee here that um, is here is a hundred dollar fee because the new con the new contract that we have for single stream recycling is now with a different vendor. They requested they put in their contract for a, a penalty fee or charge back to the county if there's a certain sort of uh, spoiled load that has to be handled specially by them. Um, so in order to recover some of those costs back to the county and also to help prevent some of the cross-contamination of the recycled materials with MSW, uh, that we feel it's, it would be pertinent of, uh, for us to add a hundred dollar fee onto those people to, to recover our costs of handling them and also to deter them from doing it in the future. That hundred dollars is substantiated by our calculation of looking at the labor and estimated time and it would take um, for that material to get handled for the administration fees. And it's not just an arbitrary number. It's based on what we feel the general estimated cost of what it takes in time and effort. <clears throat> um, is there anything else you want to add? <clears throat> I'll let I mean, we could talk about, we'll get to what surrounding counties charge. Okay. Uh, questions or comments? The legislator, too. Yeah, when you want to determine the ten percent or more, is it uh, these guys blame about it, and uh, you know you can look and see half of it's uh, one, half of it's the other, or do you actually have to do any labor to sort it to get some type of verifiable number, or uh, or right. if they once you do charge, then you have to split it, and break it out of the event where the. Uh, <clears throat> Recycle will take it. Yeah, I let Bob answer most of that, but they do provide photographs and whatnot. They very quickly can recognize almost by eyeball on the load that it's you know that it's over it's, its, its limit. Um, and they do provide documentation, photographs and whatnot to those vendors. And then they, if I'm not mistaken, they then have to transfer it into the MSW, have them pay that higher fee. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, typically what happens in the building, we have a section where we handle single stream recycling. And then we have a larger area that handles the MSW. Beyond that is a tunnel where we load, where the trucks are loaded off that tipping floor in the back. Um, so when someone comes with their single stream and a pack or pack of trucks, usually, um, you'll, as they dump, you can see, you know, there's, there's a, we always have someone standing there watching the load come out, and they can tell pretty much by looking at it. And there's, Photographs, um, you know, videos, because what we're doing is we'll, once we detect a load that has uh, excess MSW in it, we had physically move it from that floor over next door to the MSW floor, and they're billed the tipping fee for MSW, which is higher than the single stream. So that, that cost of having someone there watching the cost of the loader moving the material from one floor to the other, that's all, you know, we put 
for those well, costs. Like right well, it's and plus we we're getting uh, if if it escapes, it goes we we the county is charged one hundred and seventy dollars for the trailer load that the vendor um, takes, and that could be anywhere from two to four loads of single stream, depending on the trucks that come in that fill that trailer. So. And does the it's, vendor incur those costs too? Our vendor, yes, they that's why they're they have costs when they take it to their MRF that they can't utilize the material. So there's a cost to them there. So they're they have that fee in our contract. It's $170 per week. Great. Right. So this is our way of, as Eric said, one is to cover the costs of moving it from one bay to the other, but also as somewhat of a deterrent. I mean, they're already now paying the MSW tipping rate, which is penalty in itself. But then the hundred dollars to cover our, our costs. Uh, we made an effort to make sure that our our our, our fee is commensurate with what our costs are. Thanks. Well, while we're on the topic, um, currently are we doing this without the fee? In other words, we're assessing the load as it comes in, yes. and we're moving it if it's contaminated. Yes, we will see. Yes, and, and we did, we instituted that change in the tipping fee. That's, and, and that vent, that customer that comes in gets a video, they get photographs, they're notified of the change um, in, in what they've been doing. Yeah. And do you have a rough estimate as to how many loads that, have been taken out that we paid the 170 on? Probably almost the entire month of January, which was somewhere around. I was in, was it just a couple of people there? No, so, the most <clears> 17, 17, 17 that loads. We were, 17 loads for the month. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that we were yes. charged the $170. 17 trail loads that are trail, there, right. not 17 trail loads, yes, yes. And there were anywhere between probably 35 to 50 um, customer loads that, yeah. that go into those 17 trail loads. Right. So how, how is it that were we not doing the uh, uh, watching the loads as they were being dumped. Is that that why or and, and, and who decides whether it's a $170 load? Do we have any opportunity to well right now uh, we're to in this, argue that? Right now we're in discussion with the, with the bank about that. Just got the bills so, uh, that's being discussed right now. Because we have videos of the loads that go into the trailers as well. So we have plenty of documentation on it. So it's gonna end up we're gonna have a meeting. And, and is it our employees that are on the floor assessing the loads as they're dumped by the uh, hauler? Yes, correct. And the the uh, the company that's hauling it away, they don't. Do they have anybody on the floor as well to kind no, of go? No, not generally. Thumbs up, thumbs down. No, it's all it's all ours. So. All right. So while we're on this aspect of it, are there any other questions or legislators to tell? Um. <clears throat> One of the things you had stated, uh, Commissioner Daniel, was that you compared it to other counties. How are we compared to Rockland County? Because I know at least of one municipality that forgoes Orange County and goes down to Rockland. I'm worried about our southern border um, municipalities that would opt for there right. as opposed to here. Well, one thing to keep in mind with the bat is they have flow control down there. So they, Pardon me? they have flow control in Rockland County. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so all the garbage produced in Rockland County has to go to their facility. We do not have that here. So that gives them somewhat of an advantage when it comes to the pricing letter. So do we know what the rate, I think you're asking what the rate is. Yeah, so the, yeah yes. the rate, do you know what the rate is? Right uh, it's 104 per ton. Is that for 23 or 22? 22, 22. Uh, uh, that's the latest I have for 2023. Okay. So wait, we're going to 129. Uh, no, this is the same. We're just talking about the single stream. So we're going, we're going to so one seventeen fifty. So they don't collect single stream. They're a dual stream county. Okay, <clears throat> sorry. So that was the MSW. That was the MSW price. Oh, that yeah, was that's MSW. Yeah. One oh four. Yeah. The flow sorry, control that you're talking like, about. It's a law that they put a local law that they put on the books, and they say 
any garbage produced in that county has to go to their facility. We don't have that here. So if people here have, the legislature would have to put that in place. Um, and that's been discussed over the years. I think it's been contemplated. Um, and for, you know, for various reasons, it's decided not, not to go forward in that direction. So people who garbage produced here um, could go out of the county and they could, that business could go to other facilities. In addition with Rockland, there's a taxation component. Um, properties in Rockland County are assessed uh, money to go to the Rockland Green. It's a, there's an authority that Garbage. takes care of uh, the land holder. Yes, all, all these communities are as MSW. So um, there is a taxation component. So they're not just funded by tipping fees. There's, there's a taxation that helps fund money. So it's, you know, if you're comparing, you have to keep that in mind. Thank you. Uh, That's true. Open it up to questions about anything that someone We've been talking about this. I'm glad to hear all these these things are being implemented. Yeah. But you did mention, I heard you say something about a limit. Is there somebody standing there and they say, well, I only seen a few, so that's okay? I mean, when you, when you were talking about them watching it, you didn't mention they're watching MSW too, right? Because MSW is the bigger problem, I think, where people are. Uh, <clears throat> having the, the recyclables dumped in there. And I, I sent videos and I know we talked about it. <clears throat> so, I mean, there's somebody on the floor watching that as well for that, right? And not really. Because there's another $100 to for somebody for having to move that to the other side, right? Really. Well, that doesn't get moved though, right? That just stays in the stage. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And, and in my moving this is not as easy as it sounds. No, no I, I understand. We have picture, we have a mountain of single stream or a mountain of MSW. So the truck is backed up and then dumping it as close as they can to that pile. It's not just like a lone pile sitting on the floor that you can scoop up and move. Now you're, you're digging <clears throat> into the, what's already there and it can get, it's not as easy as it sounds. Like, but no, but you say you're watching as it comes off the truck, not after are, it's 10 loads. And, and they stop them and, and they see it's- but They do stop them. Yeah. yeah. Let them know they're getting fined. Yeah. Especially for the single stream. I'm not gonna, I'll, I can get back to you on what we actually do with the people that are in the MSW. I understand okay. what you're saying. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but, but it's more difficult to capture the single stream that might be mixed in with the MSW. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's difficult. It's difficult. Possible. That's why they do it. It's, yeah, yeah and, and there's some types of plastics that don't really generally get recycled too, so they might be in there kind of shielding some of the other stuff. You know, it's, mm -hmm. Yeah, they'll pay more for it, so you hope that that deters them from doing it because they're paying at their price. <clears throat> other questions or comments? Um, I have one issue with, with this, and it's a pretty significant one, and, and that is that we're paying um, a lot of money to take the recyclables away, but we're not charging um, what I would think to be maybe an appropriate amount or a more appropriate amount. And yet with the municipal solid waste, the fee that we're, the tipping fee that we're charging is significantly greater than what it's costing us to haul it away. And I understand um, to a degree why that's necessary, but um, I'm wondering about whether there might be ways to, to kind of close that gap a little bit. Um, and um, I, I guess maybe I direct this to Ermin because it does affect our solid waste management plan and how we're viewed by the state. We get recycling money from them, has the council has this waste money from the state um, relative to increases, greater increases in the tipping fee for single stream recycling than what's being proposed here um, to kind of close that gap and make it um, more consistent with, with what we're paying to get rid of it. Any thoughts? It's, it's a challenge. Uh, I think if we were to change the tipping rates to reflect the reality of recycling, you would see that the tipping rate for the single stream would go be you know significantly higher than the MSW which then, as you mentioned, kind of going back to the solid waste management plan, you'll see, and just with sheer economics, you'll see that it'll be a deterrent for people to want to recycle. And then that the trickle down effect to the, the fees that would be charged are the private haulers, the individual households and the other generators 
you know, it could create a spiraling effect where, you know, you'll have very little recycling happen. Um, and it's typically the case where you see in many municipalities or counties or other planning units where um, the sink thing is subsidized, more or less, whether through taxation or through the solid waste fee or a combination <clears throat> of both, just to support the act of recycling because of its multi, uh, the multiplier effect of the savings, not just, you know, at the tip, but also, you know, throughout the economy. Uh, with just more materials being recycled rather than being landfill. But if you go back a year, we were only paying seventy dollars a ton to get rid of the recycled material. And I understand you know, it's very much commodity market driven. Yep. But it, it just seems like the increase that we're being asked to absorb um, is well above what we're what we're trying to. To get in in the way of of the tipping fee, and and it is. I mean, we <clears throat> there's there's we can run numbers that are bring up then the recycling fee a little bit higher, um, maybe like one hundred twenty dollars or so, from one seventy fifty, and make the other one a little bit lower. But <clears throat> we're just very very hesitant to get them too close or get the other one higher than the other because of that reason. And we've always kind of had that thought process. We always felt it was important to keep the recycling. At least no no higher than MSW, but preferably lower than MSW. Um, <clears throat> did, we did run a number in the office that if we um, if we raise the single stream tipping fee to one hundred twenty dollars instead of one seventeen fifty, um, then we did, we could we would it would only lower the municipal solid waste by seventy five cents lower than what we're proposing, could, which would be one twenty eight. And twenty five cents, one hundred twenty dollars, one twenty seven, one twenty eight, one twenty eight, twenty five, right? And the reason for that is there's so much more of the MSW in weight. It's, uh, I think it's was about one hundred twenty thousand or more tons of MSW a year, as opposed to like twenty thousand tons of single stream a year. I mean, if you take out your recycling, you know, it's just a lot lighter than your garbage bag is, right? Um, <clears throat> so those numbers, even though you jump that up by two and a half dollars on the single stream. Only equates to lowering lowering the MSW by seventy five cents to make to get the same return back in the fees on the bottom line. But that's an option. I mean, we I'm not opposed to that. Um, it's striking it in, in there a little bit closer. Um, I do understand that concern. It's you know it's sort of masking the issue. You have the recycling, but we also have to consider. There's so many different variables here between the competing markets for other counties around us, and then. Trying to encourage the protection of the environment with recycling and everything, and, and the state requiring it. So, <clears throat> but that's an option. I mean, it's certain if the legislature chooses that. I have no problem with that. <clears throat> I would ask uh, members of the committee what you, <clears throat> if you have any thoughts about that uh, second option that's been offered. It would make it, I, in my mind, more equitable. Maybe not as equitable as it could be, but. I'll just repeat those for everybody's benefit. So what we've suggested was $120 for the single stream tipping fee, $128.25 for the MSW. <clears throat> and that would balance it without needing funds from anywhere else because of the approximate five to one ratio it, it of solid waste. Yep, it recoups our losses um, based on the increased contractual cost um, without dipping any further into uh, surplus and whatnot. There is some surplus. We did. We have spoken with budget uh, on this or in the loop on it. Um, so there is there's surplus there, but it's not. You know, we, we, we thought we don't want to just mask the issue. We need to have the fees continue to address um, what needs to be brought in right. at, at the contract to cover the contractual costs uh, and maintain a you know a sufficient amount of surplus. <clears throat> Any comments from budget? Um, no, I think it's just you know. As we we're saying, we're basically subsidizing the recycling piece of it. So there's going to be a loss on the recycling component. Um, with the second option, there's a slightly less of a loss, if that makes sense. Probably about a thirty thousand dollar difference from what I've seen. Um, but you know, either way, it's, it's you're subsidizing the recycling piece with the MSW. Any yes, legislator. Uh, do we need a motion to discuss that further to, well, to I think, amend, I think it, amend the resolution? Or? At, at, at this point, if someone wanted to offer a motion to amend the um, the costs, they could. If 
I, I mean, I'm willing to entertain a little yeah. bit more discussion before we do that. Okay. Well, I'm willing to. I mean, I didn't know if we needed to do that first yeah. or not. Okay. Thank you. Or just that we do that. Yeah, just so I have it straight, the single stream would go up to 120. Sorry. And uh, MSW would go back to 128. 25. 25 128. <clears throat> Which is an increase for both of both yes. from what it from what it is now. But it's just and it, oh, you're decreasing it from what we originally proposed on the legislative request. And, and what's the net amount of the uh, difference? Um, so again, if you're looking at it as a, as a loss, so it would be with the first proposal, um, it would be about one hundred and seventy eight thousand um, dollars. That the expense would be higher than we're subsidizing it. Yep. And with the second proposal, it's one hundred forty two thousand. So. You know. Uh -huh. I don't think we have uh, other costs that are incurred, so we won't make any extra money. But uh, if uh, Barry, you think that's a uh, wise way to go and to uh, move those two rates around a little bit, I would uh, consider that. You know. um, I guess then, if, yes, that's uh, our question. Man. So, what stops the garbage collector from raising his rate? Nothing, right? It's all going to ultimately it's going to go back to the customer. I mean, the timing of that might be different. They may have contractually be locked in through the end of the year, per se, and then they may increase their rates then, or they might approach their customers and say, "Hey, look, we're going to pay these fees." They they might get a letter in the mail saying we we're imposing an increased fee because of the put them in the way bad or not. Well, yeah, that's that's a sort of a different topic. Yeah, but, that's the problem. Well, and, and maybe we should address that to Ermin. I mean, a lot of that's education, not just of the homeowner, but also of the hauler. And I don't know whether there's something we can do at the tipping floor, you know, when, when we see this happening to address it with the haulers. Um, I, I'm not sure do we have any opportunity to uh, to monitor that and do any enforcement? Yes, we do. That's so what we're doing. That's right. what you're doing now, right? Well, I want to we find out exactly what we're doing before I tell you what. Okay. I, I want to know what we're doing. So my suggestion would be then you give him a couple times. You get caught twice, he goes up like two times the amount. And if you really want to prevent it from happening, you know that's that's penal penalizing. Now probably slow back a little bit, and then the word will get around. So. I mean, that's how I see it. And there's, and there's two different issues. One is we see the loads come in and we're trying to get that, you know, this hundred dollars right, in place, right. right? And then you have the other issue where you see, we might get a phone call from a resident that says, hey, I, I was looking out my window when they came this morning and they put it all in the one bin. I had two cans out there and they dumped it all in the one. And we've been working with the law department as well to understand what type of leverage we have for enforcement. Um, and then we, we, we will always take that complaint, contact the vendor, Whoever, if we have the name of the vendor and whatnot, and, and make sure we make a phone call and we have the record of that. So, um, but we also work with the law department. So what, so what the, what's the law department said? They, they haven't said anything about you being able to you catch somebody doing that? Uh, find or? Yeah, there was, there was, a, there was, a, there was a, it was a license. There was a, yeah, there was a possibility that they could jeopardize their license to do the business. So that's pretty good. That we've not, we haven't taken anything to that point. Um, and if we did, we'd have to work through that with the law department. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I see even a suggestion of that might yeah. help. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. That we're working with the law department on uh, possibly using the license to yeah. dump here. I think that would help a lot. I, think. Yeah. I don't know. But... Good point. Uh, just so I have it right, that if uh, we're subsidizing it to the tune of $170,000 uh, now, and uh, if we do this, we would be subsidizing it at the tune of one hundred forty thousand dollars. That would be based on the tonnage that was proposed. So. Yeah, it's not. It's not the now version. It's it, this is yeah. So based on um, yeah, based on the situation. estimated tonnage for for twenty twenty three, which obviously you know can vary. Um, so the difference would be the, the five dollars per ton that we're basically eating the cost of that would be absorbed by the MSW. So um, again, with the, bring the number down. Right, so yeah. that would be the difference. So we're either, um, so the difference is either, either way we're paying $125 per ton for the hauling component. But the tipping fees under the first proposal were $117.50. So that's 
um, you know, seven dollar fifty cents difference. With the second proposal, it's a five dollar difference per ton. So the variable variable would be the tonnage that we collect per year. But um, yeah, compared to what we're doing right now, because we were only paying seventy dollars. I mean, I, sorry, right now, let's say at the end of the year, twenty twenty two, paying seventy dollars for to send a single stream to haul it away. Yeah. So there was a lot less of a supplement at the end of 2022 than there is now. So, so keep in mind that you have we'll have one quarter at the old tipping rates under our belt for 2023. So the math we did with the spreadsheets that we prepared show that first quarter we were severely in so in the race, you know, or a lot more of a loss a lot, we're a lot more collecting that higher shipping. So, you know, um, at the end of the exercise, at the end of 23, we hope to be even with our between our MSW and our single stream to where it's we're not impacting the budget. Yeah, in other words, if we, if we had raised it on January 1st, yeah. we may have raised it a little bit less because we're collecting over the entire year. So we're only doing over three quarters of the year, raising it a little bit more to recover for what we lost for the first quarter. But going into 2024, it does hopefully just means we don't need to raise them as high as we would have had to going into the next year. So that we're just potentially, and we'll have to evaluate. We have to see where our contracts come in. I think our the single streams every six months right yeah, now so. for variability in the market. We had to build that into the contracts because we were locking in contractors for too long of a time period. And then we weren't getting the, the competition in the bids because they said it's too much of a risk on them if they have to lock in the same price for two years or something. So we had to build it in the car every six months. They have the ability to come back with a certain percentage increase or decrease. But oh, we'll see that. Okay. I don't know if we'll see that. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> uh, which I think we had a up to 5%, and we may consider even increasing that percentage in future contracts because it turned out it was 5% was nowhere near enough. The single stream, so we had to put it, we had to go out to bid again. Or, and the prices did come in as high as what he was asking for, essentially. <clears throat> Mr. Ben, did you have just a comment? Ulster County uh, Resource Recovery Agency also has flow control for MSW, and they're putting inspectors out on the road to check haulers and what they do. And they are under threat of uh, a phase system of penalties financially, as well as then losing their license to care. Uh, to, all waste in Ulster County. And it all started because the new director was brought in to take over from California, uh, moved to Ulster County. And his wife, of course, was watching the garbage hauler who just started, you know, they started paying to take away their waste. And he was commingling everything, throwing everything in the same truck. So that's that's what started Ulster County because they didn't do it at all where, wherever he lives. There's some research already done. Um, just a follow-up point of interest. What factors contributed to the significant increase? We saw almost up, well, probably 70%, 75% in the cost to haul away the uh, single stream recycle. Um, the, the instability of just the overall economy. Uh, you know, less, you know, uh, the markets are just totally down everywhere. Nobody's making purchase orders for XYZ material to produce XYZ thing. So that's making the demand for recycled products, you know, uh, pretty low. So um, it's a challenge. And then you have inflation with, you know, price of oil and gas that are going up. So it's kind of getting squeezed at both ends. Yeah, what the, what the hauler, the hauler that we're paying to take recycling away, it's costing them more money on their end. And they're just they're just sending that cost our way. It's essentially the, and, and, well, the they're, and they're not market. they're not getting any saleable products <clears throat> yeah. from it. Yes, legislator Tottel. Just one follow up question: If we're looking to amend this, um, the the implementation of the one hundred dollar per load fee to be assessed yes. to the vendor, um, would it behoove us to raise that to deter it more? I missed the first part of the question. Okay, so the implementation of the hundred dollar per load fee to be assessed by the vendor, mm -hmm. um, would it behoove us to raise that more than a hundred dollars 
to as more of a deterrent? Well, we or are we my, locked in some way that we? Can't my understanding, we can double check back with the law department, is that it can't be just an arbitrary fee. It has to be substantiated by our overhead cost to do that. Can we be just a deterrent? It can't. The deterrent part is not. Right. Yeah, that's what, uh, and I, we totally understand where you're going because yeah. it kind of crossed our mind too. And, but we were kind of okay. We have to stick with the calculation, basically, to substantiate the number of hours that we're going to put into it with the salaries and, and build that cost. You know, have, and, and that's as high as you it's get. Close, and we, I mean, we did consider you know, looking a little higher, but um, I think that's something we'll monitor. And if we don't think it's high enough, then we'll better track the time we're spending on it. And if we have to, we, it's possible we could come back and say we'd like to raise that rate in the future. Uh, we'd like to, we ideally would like to say, hey, it's there, it's fixing the problem, and we don't even have to pay. We're not even spending that extra time because it stopped them from doing it, right. and then we don't have to come back because there's no not even opposing it. Yeah, but we'll believe that when it happens. <clears throat> but um, we, we will, we'll definitely consider that. We'll keep track of it and consider coming back in the future if we need to raise that. It's more time consuming. Just want to quickly, are you going to uh, send out notices to all of the callers and uh, and uh, notify them of? Not only the change, but also the $100. Yeah. <laughs> Just the best we sent them out as early as we can I mean, with the proviso that until the legislature approves it, they're not in effect. Yeah. But I think so the more notice we can give them, the better. Yeah, and we're going to have municipalities, and Barry and I have had this conversation where you can never hit every municipality's budget cycle perfectly, right? Because the villages are different than the towns, right? And some of the, some, some, some of the municipalities are going to be locked in the contracts. Um, for a certain period of time, some of them are the vendors going to be able to hit them right away with an increased cost. So we, we got, I'm sure we'll get a mix of, of complaints that'll come through raising it, but there's never you can't make everybody happy depending on when there's never a sweet spot during the year necessarily. Um, <clears throat> we'll have to deal with that as it comes in. Um, just, just to add to that, so these three prices are new to them. The hundred dollar fee is new to them when you send this out now. Now is the perfect time to tell them that we're working with the county attorney uh, in regards to possibly assessing fees for it. It's not a lie, right? And right, it's right in their mind, and right away, oh, this is new. We better start, you know. We did, it, we did, we we did not make it a secret that we're coming before you for a penalty fee. That was, but well, well, right. I think that, I think the, and, and I think it, it's kind of in your lap. You know the the whole enforcement issue that we've discussed that yeah. you brought up, minority leader, and and that you've said you've had those discussions with law. Continue those discussions, mm -hmm. please, and report back to us so that yeah. uh, you know they they understand that uh, um, we're going to be enforcing to the extent we can to get you to comply and do things properly right. because. At the same time, we need to demonstrate that to the state relative to how we um, promote recycling. So if we can't do it with two hundred dollars instead of a hundred, let's find other ways. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So at this time, someone would like to make an amendment to yeah. the motion. I would like to amend um, the motion for the request to confirm all rates, including increasing certain rates charged Orange County. Own solid waste disposal facility for single stream recycling and municipal solid waste effective 4123 to amend the municipal solid waste and increase to a $128.25. So that'd be a decrease. Decrease, excuse me. And then to increase the single stream recycling to $120.00. Can I get a second? I'll second. Okay, Legislator Scavage, thank you. Any further discussion? I'll just clarify that it is, it's an increase from where it's at now, it's just right. a decrease of what we originally proposed. Right. Yeah. That's oh, what I was, I was looking oh, at. Sorry. Yeah, I was looking at the 121.25. That's what I'm sorry, I should. So to about. increase it from 121.25 to 128.25, and from 110 to 124, the Single stream recycling yep. and okay. implement the yep. leave the implementation of hundred dollar per load mm -hmm. fee to be assessed to a vendor as is. Okay. Any further discussion? All right. Could I get a roll call on the amendment, please? Ben. Abstain. Russia. All right. Did you? Yes. Hi. Yes. 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 
All right, the, the amendment carries. Now I will ask for um, a vote on the uh, amended motion. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Carried. And one abstention. And one abstention, yes, thank you. And that, that included the $100 fee, correct? Yes. Correct. Yes. <clears throat> one thank thing, you. Mr. Cheney, before the, before the yes. gentleman leave, we need to get Ehrman a proper county ID. He was he was waiting in line to get to security okay. when he should just simply swipe. And I asked him, what are you doing? And he said, well, I don't have the one that has like the scanner okay. chip okay. or whatever it is. We'll deal with that. We'll get so it. please get him a <clears throat> proper ID. Thank Sarah. you. And yes. Before they, I like we have say, a different one in our office, um, right? I don't, flow control has not come up in my tenure to this point, up until this point. Yeah. Uh, if you have any uh, historical information on it, and maybe what the the, especially the municipalities and the DPWs and the municipalities reaction to that was. If you could send some of that to to um, Carrie Ann or Doreen or, or Jean to send us. Oh, we'll see what we can find. Yeah, I'd like to dip into that and see more about it and understand it a little bit better. All right. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thanks. Thank, Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Uh, next. Uh, the sheriff's office. We have two items. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay, first item is a request supplemental appropriation of the capital projects budget for renovation of the sheriff's canine facility. This project has been approved under the 2023 capital plans project number 123. Upon approval, a new capital project will be created. $389,000 in bonding is legislative request number 25. And could I get a motion? One more second, please. Russia, and second. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Well, that was under the old proposal from back in mm -hmm. April 22. So what we'd like to do is under the new proposal for $31,636.96 is replace the floor. We took some pictures of the floor. It doesn't really do it justice how spongy it is. The doors are all rotted out. It just, just needs to be replaced because it's in disarray. I think on the original proposal was for um, other improvements like a park a lot, the heating, the cooling. Uh, I think what we'd like to do is just have this proposal approved to replace the flooring in the building. Sure. Of the sure. Mm -hmm. So are we amending it from 389,000 to? No. Yes. I would recommend we do like 40,000 in case other areas come up as they're doing the work. That way we have money to address it right from the capital plan. And is there still intention to do the other work or not that it's fine? Not at this time, it's just a floor. Just to just be a, a repair to a floor. Legislator Benton? Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, what would be the cost to just build you a new one? Tear the old place down, put up a new one. It sounds like that would be something that could be ARPA funded, possibly. You might want to look at the lady behind you. <laughs> possibly. Possibly. <laughs> possibly. And then you have a, a new facility, probably much more utility and such, and we wouldn't be spending $40,000 to replace um, um, a floor. And um, we just have a much better training facility. I think it's the sheriff's vision to have a better training facility, just not at the airport. We have property at uh, the current sheriff's office now. Some of it does have some footings and some foundations that we'd be able to do it there. Uh, number one, it's closer to the highways and intersections. So, because we train a lot of people, not only from all the counties throughout the state of New York, but also from other states, where people come in from Vermont, they come from Massachusetts. So, it's easier to egress than I do. The facility and they're right there, so it would serve as a multi purpose. I'd just rather not spend bad bad money to have something replaced. Yeah, well, how long would it take to do a uh, 
a new building. I mean, we're talking yeah. years. Well, well that's, I mean, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's what we're spending. You might spend forty thousand dollars now, but the big picture is to yeah. Right. Yeah. I think no matter what, you have to yes. you have to repair the floor now as it is because it's deteriorated to a point where the facility is almost not usable. So you need to get a few more years out of the facility. So we need to do that repair now. And timeline wise, you timeline wise, you would be probably three to five years. You know, getting another facility built on our current property. That would be the timeline. So we'd probably not be eligible for ARPA in that case. Yes, but, unless you're yeah. modular. <laughs> oh, yeah. One of those modulars. Right. I like modulars. I don't get back to the business. Right. But, yeah, but currently it's unsafe for the yeah. yeah for the guys and women to train in there and also for the tenants that go in throughout there. It's blocked off the cones and every other thing. You know, it's it's floor too. Yes. Yeah, the, the 31 of the 40,000 is to do the subfloors to cut everything out down to the concrete. Uh, it's a pretty bizarre construction. That's why it didn't hold up for years. So yeah, it, yeah. It's, uh, it should be fixed. And this yeah. will get you some time out of the facility. But are you Did you have a yeah, I did. question? Why was there no action taken at the uh, public safety committee? Was there a concern there about something else? I did I pretty much, I, I listened to it pretty much what or I was there pretty much what they addressed to, to today with us, reducing the cost oh, okay. and cutting it down just to deal with the problem. Okay. No, this is not a hat yet. This is, a, this is a holdover. Thank you, though. Uh, let's tell you tough tell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So as I was asking earlier, you're amending this from the 389,000 to 40,000. Now, or I couldn't really tell the size from the mm -hmm. pictures. Are those the old nine by nine asbestos tile? When was that building constructed? It's constructed in the late 90s. Okay, and you're gonna replace the subfloor and the flooring, but you said there's cement underneath. I mean, most kennels and stuff I go to, it's a cement floor, so it can be closed down and properly sanitized. If, yep, yep. go ahead, I'm sorry. So would, we, would, we, would it behoove us to stay at the cement floor or i'm not sure if how the structure is sitting on the floor the cement floor underneath there uh we believe it was not it wasn't poured like a cement floor you're imagining i think it was poured it's just an underneath floor to kind of take kind of prep for what when they laid down the two by fours on it so i think if we were going to approve the three hundred eighty nine thousand, we would demo out the whole entire floor or a whole entire concrete floor and build it. right that would be the that would be the way to fix that permanently because you know when the K9 and the sheriffs leave, there is potential for that building to be used by the airport or someone else out there it's on the airport property. So it would become a, a useful building. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, Carrie. Um, rather than moving us down five years down the road to temporary fix, do we have ARPA funds left? So tomorrow we'll be at Ways and Means with our proposal of where the funding should be spent. Um, I don't want to speak on behalf of the county exec's office, but my fear would be, as everyone stated, time to get this done. We have to have the funds encumbered by 24 and the project done by 26. And I can tell you that when I was in the health department, we started the MA's project back then, and it's years later. And, and we're moving quite along. DPW has done a phenomenal job. But my personal opinion is that the timing of this is it going to happen to make it into the ARPA funding? Chairwoman Benelli, did you want to have a comment? Just going back to the discussion in public safety, um, really didn't have a lot of substantial information. Ryan wasn't present, so the sheriff and his team were kind of at a disadvantage there. <laughs> You're just kind of picking up where this left off as a capital project with not a lot of supporting documentation. I think we all agree that something needs to be addressed and Brian, you put it very well in regard to there has to be a fix there because it's just not acceptable the way it is. To move forward, I think I heard from the sheriff and his team that yes, it might be a better proposal for the long term to move the facility. They even had some places that they had in mind as far as doing that. But in the meantime, we would need to fix what's there. Uh, and as far as the ARPA funding, 
you know, tune in for tomorrow, same time, <laughs> and, and you'll see what the proposal has been. And uh, it's all reasonable is that the time frame has always been a struggle for us. So uh, I, I think what is being presented now and the reason public safety didn't act on it is that they didn't have enough information. They didn't have being privy to Brian being present explaining all of this. And short of um, just tabling it for 30 days, um, we were conscious that this agenda hadn't gone out, so we would bring them here to discuss this with you. So I hope that answers some of your outstanding questions. And, but very valid point, Legislator Benton, as far as would we be better off with a new facility? Legislator Tewitt. Oh. With the um, amount going down to 40,000, now if you go with Brian's number, um, would that be bonding also, or can that be our bond? Would it be the state? Okay, 2024, 2024, I think they've got a list, right? So we do Tomorrow. have a list of the money spent to the T um, at this point of where we think the projects that show and Vanilla are faded, what we think we can get done. I don't want to speak on behalf of people. Yeah. Uh, my, my suggestion is that you know everybody's going to see the list tomorrow. Um, you know, a lot of thoughts been put into what projects and what kind of work we can get done in a timely fashion. If you take something off that list to put this on, then we're just going to ask to bond something else that we didn't do on the list later. I always suggest we solidify that list and move on with it because we are going to run out of time eventually. Yeah, not looking to change. Yeah. I, I think if, if, if you look to not bond this, we're going to ask, we're going to look to bond something else to take up with it. So, it, it's, you know, six and a half, one dozen. Eric did a great job of explaining that. You're just taking it over here and put it over here. And it's, yeah. I, and I'm not trying to prioritize one project like the DPW wants to do over the sheriff's wife. It doesn't matter. We would no. just come back and ask for bond, you know. I didn't realize so it. For my script tomorrow, the dollar, is it it Eric's point, for my script tomorrow, basically, we worked with these departments. Numerous, numerous meetings to ensure that we can get to where that list says that we'll be able to use, use that money correctly. Okay. So, thank you. Yeah. Our leader, Padu. just uh, uh, this this new list that was formulated was it done by the county executive office and just department head with no in the legislature? Or, I mean, since we do own most of the property, all the property. And I had concerns about that when we first knew how much ARPA money we were getting, is to have a legislative committee, maybe have ideas on where we could use some of this money, but nothing happened with that. So who, who uh, is it all county executive and department now? I'd like to call on the chairwoman of the legislature to respond to that question. Actually, that was one of our questions, and we did work very closely. I, along with um, Legislator Benton, have been on that committee. We have attended the meetings. And the times when Mr. Benton couldn't show up, he was able to join us via <clears throat> satellite. <laughs> and so we, we were a big part of it. As a matter of fact, we just had a meeting last week, and we were pretty much down to the wire. And I introduced something at the last second that was now part of the project as well. As well. And that is the monies that we would be spending out of the legislative budget for redistricting. So that's included in that as well. So yes, have we been partners with the county executive and all the department heads? Absolutely. And, and leadership wasn't included, just you? Myself and the chairman of Ways And that's it. So that's the majority correct. and the minority leaders. No, they were not included. I don't understand that. Okay. Um, <coughs> looks like to tell the gentleman another question. Uh, or... Yes, do we need to amend this resolution? Uh, yes, I did. I guess at this point, uh, with most of the discussion over, I would entertain a motion to amend the motion to change the amount from 389,000 to 40,000. I'll make that amendment. Okay, thank you. Uh, do I have a second? Uh, any further discussion? Right. Seeing none, um, we are voting on the uh, motion to amend. From three hundred eighty-nine thousand dollars to forty thousand uh, dollars. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Carried. And now uh, we will vote on the amended motion. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Carried. Good. All right. 
Next, we have uh, a request supplemental appropriation to the capital projects budget in the amount of $2,500,000 for the building expansion at the Orange County Sheriff's Office. The Sheriff's Office has capital project number 326 for the expansion in the amount of $350,000. Upon approval, the funds will increase capital project number 326 to a total of $2,850,000 bonding Legislative request number 27. And could I get a motion of the second? So moved. Second. Hotel and Tui. And uh, again, um, this was also um, at Public Safety Committee, and they decided not to take any action on it. Yeah. So, go ahead. All right, so this project has, has also been around for a while. It started in, it might have, it might have got funded for this in 2019, but I'm not sure, or at least 2020. So in 2020, an RFP went out uh, to architect engineers. Uh, we had a bunch of projects in there. One of the projects was looking at the sheriff's office uh, and evaluating the space, evaluating how the space works with their operations. And, you know, they knew that there were, at the time, the administration knew that there were definitely some uh, areas that needed improvement. Um, in some areas that didn't. So, in you know, that started in 2020. In 2022, we got the contract signed with the architect. So, in June, they came, they sat down uh, at the sheriff's office, we sat down with a, a group over there uh, that was land associates who got the uh, contract. So, they we sat down, they did some site visits, uh, land developed a plan, they actually developed a state staff database. Uh, with all the sheriffs, you know, with employees on three shifts working to see how the building functioned and, and what was needed throughout the building. Um, what they came up with, uh, you know, in some some areas were okay as they are. Like the civil division, they called out that's okay, you know, it doesn't need any more room or anything else. Uh, some other things do need a lot of additional room, like the investigation, the investigative division uh, for as far as evidence storage goes. I think the um, you can speak more to this, uh, like the red flag laws have affected how we take in evidence and how much we have to store on site. So that uh, something in, you know, inadequate female lab, locker rooms or another thing identified that need to be improved. So they came, uh, there's a draft report now. We don't, it's not quite finalized yet, but what they came up with was renovating uh, a little over 10,000 square feet. That's not the entire office. And I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know how many square feet the entire office is. Someone's going to ask that, but I don't have that tip of my tongue. And also uh, do a 15,000 square foot addition. And that would be a uh, first and second floor addition. If you, when you drive over to the sheriff's office, if you're familiar, the one wall is on an angle for the sheriff's office. I don't know if you noticed from the outside so much. So they would square that off in the parking lot and put a second floor on there. And we would, you know, use the elevator that's already there. We put a new elevator in. So that was the concept plan that Land came up with. Uh, based on interviews. So after June time frame, uh, they built that report. Uh, new administration came in in January. Of course, they sat down with the administration and we reviewed the plan again. Uh, you know, they were they were good with the concept as it is. So we want to move forward now <laughs> into full design. Hence to, to ask for the money now to add to this capital. Let's just say you're talking about. Why don't we have uh, copy of that plan, uh, something in, I mean, it's, it's in draft form. You, you will have that. So, okay. Cause I mean, you're asking for 2,850,000 and I have nothing in front of me to show what I'm spending the taxpayers, and, 2 million, almost $3 million. On. And what we're asking for this money for is to go further into design and also to bring a construction manager on. This is not for building it. Two million eight hundred thousand eight hundred fifty thousand dollars for design. Yes, that would be added to the account, and that's not to say that that entire amount is going to be spent on design. It will be rolled into construction, just like we did with the ME building. Percy, the I'm sorry, I, that three million for design just is blowing my mind. Mm -hmm. You just are, are we creating the Taj Mahal for crying out loud? This is this is ridiculous. When you for us, and it's it, it. I mean, this is a significant amount of taxpayer dollars, and I have nothing but a piece of paper saying for 
the building expansion at the Orange County Sheriff's Office. That's 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 the language I have. And without further information, Mr. Chairman, I would definitely be a no vote on. It. I don't know why you know something from the RFP or anything is presented to us in, in, in writing form or something that we can we can actually solidly look at. And I can go back to somebody who says, "Why did you vote for three million dollars without any information?" Thank you. The legislator Ben, isn't there a standard like fifteen or twenty percent design cost standard for construction, Eric? Well. Generally, ten to fifteen percent. Ten to fifteen percent with renewable <clears throat> extra projects. Maybe, maybe, so. it's, maybe to rephrase the question for you: What is the anticipated cost right. of the construction of the building? We don't really know, we don't know yet. We're going to develop well, that as the project develops, but we're probably somewhere between twenty and thirty million. Okay, and which would that be was, yeah. I yeah. understand yeah. two stories. Very wide. Sheriff's office. Twenty to thirty million dollars. Yeah, and yeah, also for re, for feet. remodeling. Yeah. Uh, the square footage that is there. I think that's a very conservative estimate that they gave us uh, at this point. But you know, as things progress, that's when you will we'll kind of narrow that down to what what we need, or what's needed over there, and for the project to progress. Brian, where did the estimate come from? Is that the John John contract? No, from land. From land. Okay. Land. When are our on call engineering firms then provide yeah. this? Yes, we don't. That, that's coming. It's, I'm sorry, it's in draft. We so just got it today. We're actually yesterday. Can you bring the draft tomorrow? Legislator two. Yeah. yeah, when I was at the public safety last week, um, I'm just sure I think that you had mentioned that it's uh, an add, adding on a level. Currently, there's a level underneath the civil would not be touched. So, civil, the civil, uh, oh, okay. civil area of the AC We're currently, um, there's an adequate space for pistol permit. Um, for the, all the files that take, there's about 10 investigators that work there, and they're going to cram about five positions, along with the supervisor of the pistol permits, who's in a very small office again, with, with no place for storing his records or anything else. The, um, the men and women's locker room now have grown so much. That there's not adequate space for men and women to actually go in there, get changed. Uh, the under sheriff doesn't have a, her own uh, locker in there because it's just not enough space to save for the road deputies. We we'll also take it on 66 SSDs of uh, the school uh, security deputies. They also need a place to come when we train during the summer when schools close and they catch up on training. They need a space again. Just right now, I think they just have cubicles, um, so they run out of that space in that whole entire area. The investigative side has also run out of space as far as the investigators go. We brought <clears throat> some more investigators back in. They don't have enough interview room. Right now, there's currently one interview room in uh, the investigative end. A lot of cases, at least from my experiences, you have more than one. You get a defendant or a witness in a crime. You want to separate them so you can sit there and interview them properly without them listening to each other. Um, we have three. We have three uh, investigators outsourced now. Our PSCC investigators no, are not in the building. Uh, the county exec was kind enough to give some space at the 911 center. Um, we have civilians in the hallway that are comp handle confidential information, whether it's payroll, um, HIPAA, some of the stuff HIPAA that we need to maintain confidential. But right now they're in the hallway because we don't have enough space. Um, it's totally our phone. It's been 25 years, I guess, since its last anything's been done. How many square feet did you say? I don't know what the I think it's twenty thousand the whole entire sheriff's office. No, I don't know. Oh, the, about the addition. Oh, the addition. Oh, the addition. Uh, fifteen. Yeah, I would say fifteen. Fifteen six yeah. around fifteen, 15. six. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's moving. Four underneath is fifteen thousand square feet too. And how much did you say? Twenty five to thirty million. Twenty to thirty. Twenty to thirty million. Okay, so twenty five million. This is the first. You know, this is the first step. The, uh, right. That's as much as the medical exam. That going from scratch. Right. Yeah, I think Land was also a little gun shy. I don't say gun shy, but they were concerned too because they've gotten some bids back lately that have been much higher than they estimated. So just in in their business, so that's you know forced them to give a conservative estimate. Yeah, I think we need to see the draft if you just got it. You know, before we move forward. Legislative Ben. Uh, question uh, Does the state still have to approve the design and everything? I would 
think so, right? I think the state would have to uh, approve the any juvenile. If we had a juvenile room in there, we dare I have to approve it first. It's not the same as correction. The correction. Right. Any any structural changes in the correction side would have to be approved by the state commission. But I think on this is just the administrative side of the house. I, I don't think. So. And then juveniles we send down to Rockland. Well, they, a number of places. Rockland is one, one of. One yeah. Of, okay. Okay. And also, uh, Brian said we can have copies tomorrow uh, at recent meetings. And that can be then emailed or sent to every other legislator at the same time. But but copies tomorrow don't okay. really give I understand. An opportunity I, to I, I understand. review anything. I, I understand. I'm, I'm, I, I share the concerns that have been expressed relative to, I agree to moving this forward as, as, as quickly as we're, we're being asked. And I think that um, for us to do our diligence as legislators on behalf of the taxpayers of the county, it's it's our responsibility to, to get a lot more information than we've seen so far. Um, we're not questioning or doubting anything that's being asked for, but we just, I think, want to see it. So, uh, Chairwoman Benelli. Uh, I wholeheartedly Agree. Um, we need to be able to have a good presentation, set aside time on these agendas next month to really have some strong information ahead of time so that legislators can come prepared to this table to ask a lot of questions after they've had the opportunity to. You know, we talked about it a long time ago. It's surfaced now and it's putting the sheriff's people at a disadvantage because they weren't there when it, we went through the process. So let's readdress this. Let's not necessarily start from scratch because Brian, thank you very much. We have some current information we can work with and let's plan to put this out there next month if that's enough time for you. If not, two months. I mean, we've waited this long, another two months and then address this properly. I think everybody wants to see this you know, and understand what's going on, and then we can do it the right way. Because to do it now and then try to rush to get plans tomorrow, it's this isn't the way to do business. I'm sorry. But you can't make the motion, so I'll make the motion. Okay. Well, yeah, we, we've got a motion. motion. We, there's a motion on the floor to <laughs> approve it. We we can just vote no, and it doesn't pass. Uh, can legislative we? aggression. And, and yeah, just, I, I can just withdraw. Just, I concur with most of what's been said. I mean, I know there's a need um, under sure what you said, but I mean, the whole jail plus is 89 million. That was 25 years ago. But, you know, we had to redo the uh, security cameras. We had to recently, we did the cool floor, the whole system on the roof. We're doing a new roof. Uh, we've done the, the remedies over the years, but I mean, that's, that's a big knock. You know, even in today's dollars, it's, uh, you know, I think we need to. Dig on it before we, you know, ask all the questions that, that have been said. So I agree. Yes. Does it make sense just to vote for the agenda as opposed to no? Or just well, well we, 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 we've got we've got a motion, and yeah. so we have to act on the motion. So withdraw. Can I, can oh, I could we withdraw? To table the draw. Withdraw. 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 We can have a motion to withdraw. Yes. All right. Withdraw. 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 I'd like to make a, a motion to withdraw. This agenda item, legislative uh, request number 27, and table until next month or when? Uh, I, I wouldn't say. No, okay. Just motion to withdraw. Second. 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 from uh, Legislator Tui. Uh, any further discussion? Okay. All in favor of the motion to withdraw? You can probably say aye. 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 Any opposed? Carried unanimously. Um, and uh, just Brian, I don't know whether you're prepared to do this if I'm popping it on you, but uh, could you just give us a, a little bit of an update on the medical exam? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It'll yeah. do what I want to do with it tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. it's, that's, in, that's in Lee's lap, not mine. Yeah. Okay, could I just? I, I, I'm not asking for this to be long and drawn out. I just wanted to kind of get an update from um, DPW on the medical examiner's office status. We received bids right around when we met last month. So uh, just if you could give us an update on where things stand. Yeah, 
trying to remember where we our last conversation left off. But the bids came in, they were reasonable within it was within three percent of the estimated cost. When you look at all the all time contracts together, um, we had met with uh, each one of the low bidders for each one of the prime contracts, um, along with the county administration. Mike was there with us along with Harry Four and the design team. Everybody was happy with the answers we received from those contractors. We proceeded to send a um, the, uh, notice of um, intent to award the, the contracts. So I sent those others out um, under my signature. And at this point, I guess where are we at to that? I'm ready for the contracts to get together, and then we're going to need the bonds and insurance from each one of those. That got those contracts that will likely take a number of weeks to get those contracts in place. Um, we are going to be work, walking, working through some some of the parking concerns. I know that Brendan Casey has with how much of the space we're using up over there for the trailers and the, you know the loading and storage areas for the construction. So we do intend to meet with him to go over that a little bit more and see if we can work out getting him a little bit more space and for the construction the contract to use a little bit less of the space so they can maintain some of the events they might need to have. So we sort of work through some of that. Um, I think that overall, we were looking at the schedule was 2024. I forget the date. Yeah, summer 2024. It's 411 days from the notice to proceed. So once contracts are signed, and then we'll, you know, issue the notice to proceed probably around April 1st. They'll be, you know, breaking ground so later, soon after that. Any questions? What was the number? 29. That is construction only. Construction only. The overall with soft costs, uh, I, and I think it's going to be on the ARPA list tomorrow, right? Um, they're, they're coming in to, to bring it up to 24 million, I believe, total. Is that right? Yes, 24. Right, okay. All right. Good. Anything else? Thank you for the update. Much appreciated. And with that, uh, we have nothing else. I entertain a motion to adjourn. Legislative so Cartel, we'll second to take damage. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse I'm going to be an architect, so I'm I, 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 to design a building. Holy crap. I'm so happy. Well, it's, it's, I know, it's the electrical it's, engineers. Well, and, well, but it's, and it's also the construction manager. Who, uh, the county hires a construction manager to 